Hello, I'm Dr. Gerald Chodak. The next treatment option to discuss for localized prostate cancer is called radical prostatectomy. This treatment has been available longer than any other of the treatments that we do have available, so we have longer information and longer follow-up. What exactly is a radical prostatectomy? Well, we're going to open up your body in some fashion, and we're going to remove the entire prostate gland along with the seminal vesicles which are attached to the prostate. In some cases, although very uncommon these days, we may also remove some of the lymph glands that are near the prostate gland to see if cancer has spread there. Once the prostate and seminal vesicles are removed, we're, they're going, we're then going to reconnect your bladder to your urethra so you'll be able to urinate like you were prior to the operation. In general, that operation takes anywhere from an hour, an hour and a half, to as long as five, six, seven hours, depending on the technique and the expertise of the surgeon who's doing that operation. What are the pros and cons of surgery? Well, the main advantage is the following. If you have a cancer in which all the cells are inside the prostate gland capsule and the prostate is removed, then you will be cured of your cancer. However, we don't cure every man with surgery, and the reason is, in some cases, a few cancer cells may have already left the prostate gland and gone to other parts of the body. Unfortunately, there's just no way to know ahead of time whether that is the case for you. So many of the men who undergo surgery may have already have cancer cells spread. Now, a theoretical advantage of surgery is that if the cancer is completely confined, you will be cured, whereas if you have radiation, some of those cancer cells may not be killed, and later on they may the cancer may recur. So theoretically, for men with localized cancer, surgery might be a better choice in some cases. Having said that, you need to be aware of that there are no clinical studies proving that surgery is better than radiation or worse than radiation or worse than brachytherapy or seed implantation. The best we can tell you is that these treatments are pretty similar in terms of getting the long-term results, at least at 10 years and probably up to at least 15 years. Beyond that, we just can't make good comparisons. Now, as with all treatments, there are potential complications. The two major complications with surgery include problems with having erections, we call that impotence, problems with urinary incontinence or urinary leakage. Both of those will recur or occur after surgery, and over time, they improve. Some people improve within a few weeks, some people in a few months, some people it may take a year, and some people may have permanent problems. The likelihood of having these complications depends on three things. You, how you're healthy you are, how old you are, the kind of cancer you are, how extensive it is, and the expertise of the surgeon who's doing the operation. As a result, when you are considering your options, you are fully entitled to ask some tough questions of the surgeon before making a decision. You want to know how many do they do each, day, each week, each month, in a year, in the last five years. Because studies have shown that doctors that have fewer eat, done each year are more likely to have complications compared to people that do more of them. So you want someone who is well qualified. And around the country there are people, many people, who specialize in doing this operation. You also want to know about the complication rates that might occur by the surgeon who's going to take care of you. We have questionnaires that we can send to patients that can give us pretty accurate information about the likelihood of developing these serious complications. Most doctors don't have that information, but some do and more and more get them all the time. You want to ask your doctor specifically, what are their complication rates for man, a man in your age bracket? How many have they done that way? And what is the likelihood that those complications will occur? You're entitled to that information. And if a doctor can't give you good information, I'm not sure that's the doctor you want to have take care of you. It certainly isn't the person I'd have take care of me. 
Now, another thing to be aware of is that there's three methods for doing the radical surgery. One's called a radical retropubic prostatectomy, another is a perineal prostatectomy, and now we can do what's called a robotic prostatectomy. There's a lot of advertising and hype going on about this robotic technique. The truth is that at the present time, in the beginning of 2008, there is no scientific evidence that one is better than the other. It's not the technique, it's the person who's doing it. So if you have an excellent, qualified person that does radical retropubic, you can compare that to the results of a person having perineal or robotic surgery. You want someone who's an expert at the technique they use, but there's no clear proof that one is better than the other at this time. Another thing, some people believe they have to have surgery immediately. You should take time to ask questions, to research your choices, and give some consideration to what you think is going to be best for you, realizing that there's no studies proving one is better. Each treatment option has advantages and disadvantages. The reason you don't need to rush is because in most cases, your prostate cancer has probably been present for a number of years before it was diagnosed. So waiting a few more weeks to get your treatment is unlikely to make a significant difference. In other videos, I'll talk more specifically about the various surgical techniques. But the bottom line is, surgery is an excellent candidate or an excellent choice for men that have a long life expectancy and a clinically localized prostate cancer. And make sure to ask these questions so that you're fully informed before making a final decision. Thank you.